Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. I've been sitting here drawing all day, but I'm also kind of bored because none of my drawings are coming to life. I know my pen isn't magic or anything, but I still wish they would come to life regardless. You know, on second thought, I draw horribly, so it's probably better that none of my drawings are coming to life. Frankendoodle is the episode where Spongebob and Patrick find a magic pencil where everything they draw comes to life, including Doodle Bob, who goes crazy with the pencil. Like Welcome to the Chum Bucket, this episode aired on January 21st, 2002, and is the episode that introduced Doodle Bob, one of everybody's favorite Spongebob one-off characters, purely for the fact that he created a fake Spanish phrase, Mi Hoy Minoy. This episode also introduces the concept of creating things which would later come to life, which was reused a handful of times throughout the series, most notably in episodes 236, Sandcastles in the Sand from season 6, and 437, Doodle Dimension from season 11. The latter of the two also sees the return of Doodle Bob. This episode is easily one of the most famous episodes of the entire series. I adore this episode myself and have quite a bit to say about it. But before we get to that, let's watch this episode and see how well it still holds up to this day. So the episode starts up and we see Mr. Doug Lawrence, uh, I mean, the artist at sea working on drawings with his beloved pencil. The artist at sea, as in, there's only one artist at sea? But then the pencil slips out of his hand and sinks underwater, and it's his only pencil. Underwater, Swindon and Patrick were playing rock, paper, scissors with bubbles when the pencil drops right in front of them and they freak out. When they realize it's nothing more than just a giant pencil, they decide to start drawing with it. Swando draws a jellyfish, and after Patrick critiques it, it draws to life and swims away, and Swando and Patrick dub the pencil as a magic pencil. Patrick wants a magic mustache so all his dreams will come true, and Spongebob draws him one. How many dreams does Patrick have? The mustache flies away and lands on Squidward's head, giving him hair, much to Squidward's delight. Patrick then uses the pencil to draw Squidward as a jellyfish, but it acts weird, prompting Spongebob and Patrick to erase him. Spongebob gets an idea to prank Squidward with money. Squidward's enjoying his new hair, and when he sees the fake money, he tries to grab it, but he falls down and loses his hair. <laughs> Why didn't they try and pull that prank on Mr. Krabs? Spongebob then gets another idea to draw himself for Squidward to see when he answers the door. Doodle Bob comes to life, and when Squidward answers the door, Doodlebop beats the shit out of him before grabbing the pencil and running away. Later on, Spongebob and Patrick are trying to find Doodlebob, but Patrick becomes scared to confront him. Right before they get to the poorly drawn pineapple, they fall down a hole that Doodlebob created. What just happened? Well you see Patrick, Doodlebob drew a hole and you and Spongebob fell down it, all because you were afraid to face Doodlebob. Doodlebob kept attacking Patrick with other things and ran away with the pencil. Spongebob and Patrick soon found him again, and Spongebob had an idea to surprise Doodle Bob, which made Patrick think it was Doodle Bob's birthday. It actually is Doodle Bob's birthday. It's still the same day that Spongebob created him. Doodle Bob just attacked Spongebob by throwing him, but Spongebob just got a hold of the pencil and started erasing Doodle Bob, starting with his face, and soon erased the rest of Doodle Bob until he was seemingly gone forever. Spongebob and Patrick left thinking everything was resolved but one of Doodle Bob's arms hadn't been erased. Later that night, Spongebob told Gary about what happened and drew some decorations for his room, and they all went to bed. Doodle Bob's arm snuck into Spongebob's house, raised up Spongebob's electric bill, and used the pencil to redraw himself. But of course, he's pissed that Spongebob erased him, and before he attacks him, he says, You doodle me, Spongebob! Holy crap, Doodle Bob said his first words on the same day he was born! He chases after Spongebob with the eraser and starts erasing him until only half of Spongebob remains. They fight over the pencil and Spongebob is able to redraw himself, but then loses it because he was voted most clumsy in high school. Defenseless, Spongebob is scared until Doodlebob steps on a piece of paper and Spongebob uses paper to trap him and everything calms down. The next morning, Patrick comes by and Spongebob talks about how the drawing is no longer a threat since Spongebob defeated him. Later that day, Spongebob and Patrick send the pencil back to the surface. The artist at sea is delighted to have it back, but then the lead snaps, and since he doesn't have a pencil sharpener, he's upset again, and the episode ends. Oh my god, just get a mechanical pencil! That wouldn't have even been a problem! So that was Frankendoodle, and, and holy sh**, there is so much to say about this one. Where do I start this time? I guess I'll start with the artist at sea. 
The artist is played by Plankton's voice actor, Mr. Lawrence, who's also a writer for the series. Just the artist's presence as a whole is so fun. I love how he's more passionate about his pencil than his drawings, so much so that he neglects proper pencil care with no pencil sharpener. Doodle Bob himself is also amazing. I always love just his voice and the gibberish he always shouts. <laughs> Doodle Bob is voiced by former writer Paul Tibbet, and the voice he provides is just too fitting. I always like the final words he said before Spongebob erased him and a bunch of the other noises he makes. In a way, I did kinda always wonder why he only spoke gibberish aside from the You doodle! Me Spongebob! line, but I guess it kinda makes sense because he started making sounds almost immediately after Spongebob drew him. I mean, come on, how many of you actually said your first words the same day you were born? Yeah, that's what I thought. His design is also perfect. It looks like anybody could have drawn that character and it could have made it into the episode, and I mean that in the best way possible. It would have been cool if he was shown more often in the series, but I kind of get why he doesn't. How he was created already makes it hard to bring him back more often, and if they bring him back time and time again, it would just be absolutely irritating and it wouldn't even feel special when he would be shown on screen. If you want a prime example, just look at Nosferatu. Nosferatu! He will appear a few episodes later in episode 71, Graveyard Shift, and then he wouldn't appear again until 16 years later with episode 457, The Night Patty from season 11, and now in season 13, they just can't stop putting him in episodes and I just don't understand why. They would also make a kid version of him for that dumbass spinoff Camp Coral, which is all the more proof that nothing is sacred anymore. So even though Doodle Bob only physically appeared in three episodes of the series as of season 13, I'm glad it's only three, unlike Nosferatu. And now I can't wait for Nickelodeon to show how much they hate me by using Doodle Bob countless times in season 14. Patrick himself is also amazing in this episode. This is one of Patrick's funniest episodes, if not the funniest. There are so many lines he says in this episode that have me laughing every single time. Where's the leak, ma'am? Happy birthday, Finland! You're welcome. I also like how Patrick was too scared to confront Doodle Bob at first, and then later hated just the sight of Doodle Bob. It's a neat character arc. He was scared at first to try and stop Doodle Bob, but after Doodle Bob attacked him with a wrench and bowling ball, Patrick becomes more determined on defeating him. Even if he himself didn't defeat Doodle Bob, it's still a fun character moment for him. You could say that Squidward was tortured in this episode, but I say that's not true. Sure, Spongebob and Patrick did play a prank on him which made him lose his hair, but in my opinion, he would have just lost that hair anyway. Even after he obtained it for the first time, it did still fly away later on, and it could have done that at any time while Squidward was enjoying having hair before Spongebob and Patrick pranked him, but that just didn't happen until that prank. And then when Doodle Bob started beating up Squidward, that was the sign that things were out of control. And Spongebob knew it too, which meant he needed to stop Doodle Bob before the situation gets worse. Now as for the third act, where Spongebob accidentally loses the pencil and it hits Squidward, that was an accident, not intentional. Unlike later episodes where Squidward is hurt intentionally, here Spongebob didn't mean to. And besides, the line Squidward says is so funny that it doesn't even matter if he was tortured. Spongebob, you're gonna pay for that! The tone of this episode is also great. It starts off with Spongebob and Patrick's antics with the pencil, but then things get more intense when Doodle Bob goes insane and grabs the pencil. The tension builds up throughout the second act of the episode, and Doodle Bob is becoming a bigger threat, even if he wasn't attacking downtown Bikini Bottom. Patrick was soon pissed at the sight of Doodle Bob, and then when their chance came to attack him, they jumped at it and seemingly defeated him until it was revealed that his sole arm was still around. When he redrew himself, shit really started to go down. The battle between Spongebob and Doodle Bob is pretty tense and exciting, and when Spongebob is seemingly defenseless, Doodle Bob's weakness, Paper, is revealed, and then he's gone just like that. I love the build up and the battle with Doodle Bob. When I was a kid, I really started to tense up and get a little scared when Doodle Bob drew his angry eyebrows and erased part of Spongebob's wall, causing the top of his house to thump. 
That was the most intense part of this episode for me as a kid. The scene where Doodle Bob sharpens his half of the pencil being a close second, and then of course the creepy smile of the drawing at the end. I love the suspenseful tone of this episode, as opposed to the usual lightheartedness from more episodes of the season. I also admire how brave Spongebob is in this episode, how he immediately steps up to the plate when he has to take down Doodle Bob, a crudely drawn, evil, twisted version of his own self. This is also just a theory, but I think that this episode inspired the Drawn to Life series on the DX, as well as Drawn to Life Spongebob edition where Doodle Bob himself is the main antagonist. While I haven't played it, I know Drawn to Life is a beloved series and I want to try it at some point, especially the Spongebob version inspired from this episode. This episode is awesome and I love it so much. It's one of my favorites from the whole series and is an easy example of something that makes this season so beloved and why so many people would say season 2 is their favorite season of the whole show. There's so much to love about it, but I think I've said everything I can say about it, so I'll just wrap it up by saying this. If you look at the wiki and see these two episodes having a drawing of Doodle Bob listed as an appearance, that doesn't count because Doodle Bob himself doesn't physically appear, so therefore he only has three appearances in the show as of season 13. Frank and Doodle is an amazing episode, one of the best episodes of season 2, no doubt about it. All the characters are great, the tone is pretty good, and the concept itself is creative and was executed very well. It's nothing short of classic Spongebob, and I think we can all agree it's just an all around great episode. I'm also glad that my drawings can't actually come to life. Not only would I be in trouble for creating chaos, but the world would witness my bad creations too.